I, I uh, didn't think was, anybody would buy it. Yeah, give, remind me of the subtitle. What was it? The true story of a lone genius who solved the greatest scientific problem of his time. Oh, Which, no, I'm buying that book. Wait, wait, wait. How, that, are you kidding me? That's, that's like a scientific telenovela. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but it's titled Longitude. Longitude. Right? That, that yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You might have lost me there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And people still ask me, what's it about, really? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> and you wouldn't utter the man's name because no one heard of him. Right. But uh, Harrison? John Harrison. John Harrison, who invented the first seaworthy chronometer, which is a runaway mega bestseller. Okay. Right. And another one, uh, Galileo's daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whose name was? Well, she was Virginia. Oh. But then she became Suor Maria Celeste. Celeste. When she, when she Celeste. Celeste. Yeah, that. That's the sky wow. right yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there was the glass ceiling. Actually, it was called the Glass Universe. Well, oh, the Glass Universe. <laughs> <laughs> but you okay. know, even my Sorry. editor called it the Glass Ceiling. All no, the time. Yeah. yeah. So that one was uh, that was a good one. Uh, let me just declare that my people are pretty well informed about that part of our own history in astronomy. There's a whole community of women at the Harvard College Observatory, mm -hmm. but we knew that this story was not told beyond our own retelling among ourselves, and this was an important exposition of the role that women played in early science and in particularly early astronomy.